I couldn't make it up. I literally could not make this up. Welcome back guys to yet another Romsky video. It's gonna be, I don't know what this is. This is just kind of a rant. I'm just gonna, it's story time. Story time with Romsky. We'll see where it takes us and yeah. Let's go along for the ride. For those of you who don't know, I have yet missed another competition this season for forces completely out of my control. You know, it's one thing when like things go wrong that you could have changed. I, there's not like, I don't know what to do. You know, after the trauma of Warsaw and like uh, arriving to an event without skates, I thought I had everything under control, followed my own lessons, applied them all. To be fair, on the last trip, my skates never arrived. The luggage never came. This time, the luggage followed me everywhere. Except I just, I never got to the destination. I never got to the destination. I couldn't make it up. Like, I, I, I've been telling people this story. Nightmare. There's actual nightmare. I don't, like, the worst air experience. Air travel hates me. It hates me. It just doesn't work. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. I think I should start with some context. This competition, I was competing Wednesday, Thursday, which is kind of like an interesting schedule. I'm not used to that. I kind of was excited for it. A midweek competition, that's like a thing. I like it. I was taking off on Sunday, going to Munich, and then from Munich, going to Croatia. Would have gone there on Monday. Would have slept there, had a practice on Tuesday, then slept again, ski on Wednesday. None of that happened. None of it. Okay, like not even a little bit. Going to Munich, flying, I'm sleeping on the plane. I wake up and I listen and I swear I can hear some like buzz around me. People are saying like different things. I heard like the flight attendant mention or some guys mention about Paris. I'm like, are we landing in Paris? What's going on? And then immediately the captain buzzes in and he unloads the bad news. Massive snowstorm in Munich, ice everywhere, just unlandable. Fine. You know, weather sucks. The worst part, he couldn't find a place to land in Europe. We're already in European airspace. We're like all the way there. We already flew for like seven hours. We're almost there in Europe. No one in Europe would let us land. They told us they've tried like London, Paris, Milan, Frankfurt. Nobody would let us land anywhere in Europe. Nowhere. No one. I guess it was such a big crisis. Apparently it was like record-breaking snowfall in Munich for this time in December. Of course it has to be now, of course, you know, when I'm going there. That kind of like set the course for that point where it's, it was over then, that's it, okay? But it, it got worse, it kept getting worse. I was reading an article online, like 700 flights were affected or canceled or whatever. I feel like Europe was dealing with their own thing, trying to put planes in different places. And they just told us, you know what? We ain't got time for you. Turn around, go home. So we flew back and obviously they don't carry enough fuel to go the whole trip plus again back. So we ended up landing right on the edge of the east coast of Canada, St. John's, Newfoundland. I think it was like nine and a half hours. The best outcome then would have been just to land, refuel and fly back to Toronto because it's really hard to go anywhere from St. John's, like very, very difficult because it's a unionized workforce. The whole crew of that plane, they've clocked out their hours, the crew's done. So there's no crew there once we landed, they couldn't just refuel and go back. It wasn't an option. They had to find a new crew. St. John's International Airport, not prepared for this. Obviously, like how often do you get just a random plane that lands here? We arrive at like 6 a.m. local time. So now it's Monday, like 6, 5 a.m. local time. Obviously, I'm kind of tired. I didn't sleep the whole plane, I slept part of the plane ride. And uh, a little stressed because now we're like not on our normal itinerary. Just people everywhere. No one knows where anyone is going. The process of rebooking was beginning, but something was going wrong with the system. The systems weren't working. They weren't able to rebook flights. I was at the kiosk trying to rebook our flights, I think for almost three hours. Like we were almost three hours sitting there trying to get a flight somewhere, but the system wasn't letting us change the flight. It was just like nightmare. And imagine this is 300 passengers dealing with this. I don't know what you do with that. And obviously they didn't either because this is what it looked like. It was just like endless line of people trying to find a place to go. And in St. John's, it's hard to do. And we were researching on our phones where to go and calling different people what to do, trying to figure out, do we fly to Montreal and then or fly to Toronto? Long story short, they booked us on a flight 
to go to Toronto around nine o'clock. We didn't have a connection yet. Just to, just to flight to back to Toronto. Because all they wanted to do was to send us back to Toronto so that we could figure something out. And they said, don't worry. Come and check in your bags. We won't leave without you. That flight won't leave without every single person going there. That didn't happen. And then they just let the plane go. Because it's, it's insane. You, when you have a line like this, how are you going to fit everyone on there? And no one can book tickets. Everyone's taking like two or three hours per passenger to rebook. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So that plane left. They rebooked us on another flight to go to Toronto at 12.50. Fine. My new itinerary was flying back to Toronto for 12.50. And then arriving in Toronto, I forget what it was. Something like 2, 3 o'clock local time. We're on Monday now. Okay, so we're cutting it close and hopping on another flight to go to Amsterdam at 9 p.m. Obviously very exhausting. You just flew nine hours, didn't really sleep well. You're stressed out, trying to get tickets. You fly back to Toronto, fly again for eight hours to Amsterdam and then connect from Amsterdam to Croatia. So obviously not ideal, but you got to do what you got to do, right? You, you got to commit. Our plane to Toronto gets delayed because of the fact that they couldn't rebook people's tickets. And so they were holding that plane to make sure everyone on that Munich flight was going to make it back to Toronto. They kept holding back this plane longer and longer. And guess what? Snow starts to hit Newfoundland. Shocker. Canada being Canada. It starts, you know, with some flurries here and there. And I was joking to Tracy. I'm like, yo, the snowstorm is following us. We board the plane and the captain buzzes in and says, yeah, you know, we're waiting for a few more passengers. We sit on that plane for one or two hours. And then it really started to snow. Like it was com it was coming down. And I was like, oh no, no way. There's no shot this is happening right now. Finally, the full plane is booked. Everyone got their ticket. They're ready to go. Then the captain says, uh, it's snowing too much. If we de-ice the plane and then go to taxi on the runway, by the time that all happens, it'll be iced up again. So you have to wait for the snow to calm down. The snow never calmed down. This is what my window looked like. It was just like coming down hard. So I'm stuck in Newfoundland. We sat, we sat in that plane for four hours almost. And they made an announcement and said, listen, you've got, we've got maybe one more hour to wait. If you want to leave, you can leave. We've got one more hour to wait before this crew, because now this crew, their hours are getting clocked out. So then they would have to cancel that flight. So now we're just crossing our fingers that the snow slows down, that it's safe to take off, and then we make it to Toronto. Thankfully, after we wait on the plane for almost five hours on the tarmac, which is not like the most comfortable experience, I'm not a claustrophobic person, but once you're on a plane for 15 plus hours, especially if you're not going anywhere, you start feeling it. You know, you start feeling tension. Finally, we take off, we get to Toronto, and I thought they would delay the Amsterdam flight because they knew that they had a group of people coming in to check in. As we land, I get a notification that my itinerary gets changed and that Amsterdam flight left. Gone. So we missed the Amsterdam flight. We arrive, we're talking to the agents. Unfortunately, my remade itinerary, the final itinerary, put us another day back. At that point, it's too late. I'll arrive maybe an hour or two before the event begins. And the worst part is they booked Tracy on one flight. She's going through Frankfurt. I'm going through Paris. And there were no other seats anywhere. By the time we arrived in Toronto, it was like 9.45 p.m., 9.30 p.m. Almost all the flights going to Europe are gone, taken off. There's like a handful left. And we try to get a seat on any of them. Zero seats. There's no way to get to Europe that night. So... My options are, really, I don't, I actually, no, I don't have options. The, my rebooked itinerary, my final itinerary is the following day. So, I never made it. I spent a total of, I don't know, like, ballpark number. The flight from Newfoundland to Toronto is not short. It's something like, a, like four hours. Not a short flight, three and a half or four hours. I spent something like 20 hours on a plane, maybe 32 hours total of, like, airport time and travel time, and we got nowhere just stuck in Toronto still. And this new itinerary just didn't make sense. Like if I'm gonna arrive an hour before the event, I don't even know if I'll actually make it for the event. If anything is slightly delayed, I just miss the event. I fly, I spend like 60 hours traveling to do nothing again. We had to make the decision, Gotta, we can't go. And the craziest part was I went 
to go pick up my luggage because I want to go home. And they initially told me, yeah, go pick up your luggage in carousel one. I'm waiting, never shows up. I wait for like an hour. I'm like, something's wrong. I go ask them. They're like, your bags are checked to go to Zagreb again. This time, my bags are going to go there and I'm not going to be there. Full circle. I had to go there and like complain. And, and at this point, I'm so sleep deprived. Both of us are so sleep deprived. Eventually, they did release my bags and they didn't send them to Zagreb. But I had to come back to the airport the following day to actually go and get them. And that still took like two or three hours. <sighs> Turns out my first competition of the season is going to be nationals. It's going to be one complete year without competing. I guess, you know, you play, you, you play the cards that you're dealt. The saga continues. That's it. That's the end of my rant. You guys know what to do. You know, comment down below. Tell me if... I don't know. I don't know what you say to that. I'll let you guys go. I'm gonna... Get back to training, I guess. Like this video. Comment down below. Catch you in the next one.